Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it's an honor for me to be uh, engaged in this debate today, and I just want to mention, uh, in being part of this debate, I want to congratulate my colleague from uh, Ottawa South for his leadership on the roundtable on the environment on the, and the economy for many years, that an organization that uh, did do the kinds of analysis that the Conservative member was talking about, which did show that uh, taking action on climate change would be positive for the economy as well as the environment. Um, and so what I would like to next do is to thank the citizens of Vancouver Quadra for their commitment to action on climate change and for their support for my various efforts on this, to put this front and center uh, in government's agenda for the past eight years. Vancouver Quadra is the home to many pioneers of understanding of the challenge of climate change and commitment to solutions. Uh, whether it's the David Suki Foundation that raises awareness, whether it's professors who have researched this issue and spoken up, professors like Dr. Bill Rees, who was the inventor of the concept of, of carbon footprint, environmental footprint, whether it's entrepreneurs working on solutions uh, with fuel cell batteries or uh, cle other clean technologies, whether it's the youth who have engaged in a number of organizations and gone door to door to raise the issue of climate change and the impact on their generation, or whether it's ordinary people in the street in Vancouver Quadra, this is a high priority in my writing. Uh, in addition, it's an emotional day for me to rise in support of our government's important part in the Paris Agreement and in being problem solvers with respect to climate and to rise the day after our Prime Minister announced that our federal government would ensure there is a national price on carbon. A carbon tax has been part of British Columbians' life for oh, almost a decade, and our citizens are proud of it. They're proud that the emissions were driven down over a number of years by this carbon tax, and they are actually very proud that our economy outperformed the rest of Canada for most of those years. The carbon tax in British Columbia helped return the BC Liberal government to power for its third and fourth terms. And so this is, a, this is something that has been proven elsewhere, Mr. Speaker, and it's about time that uh, the federal government, the, the country, our country of Canada has the government prepared to move forward on it. As you know, in the last election campaign, we committed to protecting the environment while stimulating the economy. We promised to play a leadership role nationally and to join the provinces and territories in taking measures to combat climate change, to establish a price on carbon emissions, and to reduce carbon-related pollution. And that is exactly what the Prime Minister announced yesterday. In fact, the Prime Minister is positioning Canada to be a global leader in this area. Take a look at what we've done over the past year. In December, we participated in the negotiations on the new historic agreement on climate at COP21 in Paris. The Prime Minister signed the Paris Agreement in New York on Earth Day. He's committed to implement policies in support of meeting or exceeding Canada's 2030 target of 30% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions below 2005 levels. And five working groups are helping build a framework and plan to turn this into a reality. At the North American Leaders Summit in Ottawa this summer, we made an, an extraordinary commitment. We pledged that by 2025, 100% of the electricity the government uses in the facilities managed by Public Services and Procurement Canada, one of government's largest real estate custodians, 100% will come from clean energy sources. To action our commitments, our Prime Minister committed to providing an additional $20 billion for green infrastructure over 10 years. And in addition, in our recent budget, three and, almost $3.5 over five years 
was announced to address a range of climate issues, including air pollution and ecological protection, and to pr pr improve environmental assessment and restore public trust. Nous faisons. We are also making investments to help Canada catch up in the world economy of, glee, of green technology. To support the development of clean technologies and innovation in this, this sector in Canada. $120 million in non-polluting transit networks and in recharge centers for electric cars. $50 million more for the Sustainable Development Technology Fund and $86 million for energy efficiency and for developing renewable energy resources. This now leads me to talk about a subject that I take particularly to heart because it's something that I've been working on personally for four months. It's what we're doing to reduce carbon emissions produced by government activities. The federal government is the largest employer, owner, and purchaser of goods and services in the country, and as such, it can make a real difference. By getting our own house in order, we are reaffirming our engagement to fight climate change at the global scale. In the federal strategy for sustainable development, we will have an ambitious target and a plan to reduce federal greenhouse gas emissions. Achieve these reductions budget 2016. In budget 2016, we announced we would invest up to 2.1 billion in repairs and retrofits to our wide range of properties and buildings and the greening of government operations. That includes improving military housing so badly needed, upgrading border infrastructure, and modernizing the generation of energy for marine communication and traffic services. It also includes significant reductions in the carbon footprint and energy use of our buildings in the national capital region and elsewhere. For example, Mr. S Madam Speaker, Public Services and Procurement Canada manages six heating and cooling plants that serve 85 buildings in the national capital region. These plants currently generate an annual average of 117 kilotons of greenhouse gases emissions and they are in need of major updating. Nous allons donc en profiter pour As such, we will take this opportunity to put in place more efficient technology which will reduce our long-term costs while reducing our emissions by over 45% in the future. This will also allow us to study the idea of using biomass as a source of energy, which could lead to even better results. In fact, when I spent a day learning about the emission reduction leadership at UBC, University of British Columbia, in my writing, I toured the new biomass fueled power plant that is contributing to the university being on track to achieve its goal of 67% reduction of emissions by 2020. Climate action is about reducing emissions, saving money, and creating jobs. Mr. Speaker, I wrote my thesis on global warming 24 years ago. I helped build the foundation for BC's climate action as the provincial environment minister for three years, and now I have the privilege of working on climate solutions in this government. I'm happy to say we're creating a systematic plan to reduce the government's own greenhouse gas emissions. This by acquiring tools, by improving environmental performance of buildings, equipment and operations, minimizing fuel consumption and exhaust emissions from the federal fleet and supporting green or low carbon procurement. And the plan also could include reducing the carbon footprint of employee activities like travel and commuting. Our success depends on the collaboration of federal employees, and so we will be involving them and seeking their contribution so that they can bring their ideas forward. And we are also studying their successes abroad and in other provinces. Ms. Madam Speaker, we are 
we are working towards having a coordinated, ambitious approach for reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the, in the federal government, and I ask members to join us in working towards the clean, sustainable economy that is Canada. Questions?